to the history part of the podcast where this month we are covering Unreal. Unreal, as you well know, because of its great popularity now because of the Mandalorian and several other big projects that are now using its technology. Uh, bear in mind that the history that we're going to cover is got a lot of shorts and false starts and whatnot, but any great technology has its moments of humble beginnings. And it first starts off with the Unreal Engine in the game Unreal was released in 1998. Um, it's famous for its um, free-forming uh, fly-through with its camera through a wonderfully designed castle as its intro screen. And um, had was also well known for its in-game scripted sequences that really upped the ante in in-game cinematic where it didn't take you out of the game, it was incorporated in the game, much like in Half-Life and Half-Life 2, where you didn't have to worry about the cinematics taking you out of the moment, but you are becoming part of the moment. Uh, unfortunately, as I said with its shortcomings, that some of the funny glitches that the, the game had with cinematics is, unfortunately, the game's AI and the scripting systems had a bit of, of hiccups where the AI sometimes had an, an interesting experience where it, it when it tried to, to do something, sometimes it would go completely different to what the filmmaker was trying to get it to do. So what it expected it to do didn't actually do it and did something completely opposite. So unfortunately, out of the control of the filmmaker that it kind of ran up. So it was kind of funny, but very frustrating when you're... Um, trying to reproduce a, uh, reproduce a scene and the AI is not cooperating, much like actors in the real world. Um, so a couple of groups came out of the woodwork for the first Unreal um, game. One of them was called Evol Team Evolve. Uh, that was done, brought up with James Hammer Morton. He was working under the, the Team Evolve banner and then he met up with another person, Hugh McDonald, who was a solo uh, machinimist who they combined forces and created Unframed Productions, which made a few um, films in Unreal and actually did a, they actually worked on a project um, for Resident Evil, uh, little bits and pieces there, but nothing of significance. I mean, it was really cool back in the day, but it didn't really react to much. Um, then fast forward a little bit, a year later, we have Unreal Tournament, the very first one. It was developed as a multiplayer heavy focus game instead of a single player. It was basically the Unreal version of Quake 3 Arena. It was really popular and the gameplay mechanics was really good. I really, me personally, I really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, the machinima development that people could do with it didn't really get off the ground with it. This is as well either because again, the tools didn't exist um, and the usability was just not there yet. Um, several teams actually developed um, some tools. One of them was called Reactor 4, which developed the tool called the Real-Time Movie Studio. Uh, it provided some better control for producing movies. Um, it did a few action skits and so forth, but unfortunately there wasn't anything of note to document to to say that it really did much. Um, so fast forward again to uh, Unreal Tournament in 2003 slash 2004. This is a big, huge turning point um, because this is actually the first iteration that used the dedicated um, cutscene producer and editor, they dubbed Matinee. Um, Matinee is definitely has evolved um, many iterations in the future. They actually just retired the name for the latest of Unreal in 2022. But way back when, in 2003, it really was a shot in the arm to, for machine production. Still had a high learning curve, but still a lot of films were made with it. Um, one of the first was actually done by um, Quick Movie alumni, Star Fury. Um, he created one of the first 
Well done, Sucker. But what was really cool before Sucker is actually that the intro for Unreal 2003 was a really polished um, introduction in-game um, cinematic for the game introduction, which really showed off the virtual production possibilities with all the characters running through a script, going through a crowd, triggering special effects. And it was a really slick presentation that really showed off the tool, tool's ability to do stuff. It, it may be hard to use, but at least it really produced some really good output in terms of what it was possible. Um, the other interesting thing that really spurred the moment, the, the creative juices is that um, Epic Games actually made a deal, a collaboration with NVIDIA, you know, the graphics company, and they made something called the Make Something Unreal contest, also known as the MSUC, which was to promote development of user-made content ranging from new models, character models and levels and maps to new gameplay types and genres. And actually what was really awesome is they also included a category for both 2003 and 2004 editions of the contest. They did it instead of under Machinima, they did it under the, the category of non-interactive -inter movie. Um, they produced the some of the, the notable films that were, that were presented as finalists and winners of the first iteration of it in the 2003 edition was um, Friedrich Kircher's The Tournament, it was, which was also featured at the second annual Machinima Film Festival. Unframe Productions had created Lucky Man as well as other films and also several other uh, notable films as EG underscore intro from Hongman Lao Ling and the showdown from Accelerated Pictures. And then for the 2004 edition, most notably, Frederick Kirshner's um, The Journey, which got the grand prize. Um, that was a, a wonderful prize of actually winning $25,000 in cash money. Um, several other notable films entitled Bot, who got in second place at 15, Sparked Memory, third place at five, Scrap, fourth place in Damnation at fifth place, $1,500. So definitely not money to sneeze at, especially for all the work people did to put into their productions, but definitely a sh super shot in the arm for machine mode production to get people spurred on to using the tools to create their films. There was also some notable um, mentions the editor has you, a parody of sorts with um, The Matrix. Cancers was also another film that Star Fury did that was really well done. He did it as a solo uh, with a small team of voice actors and so forth using the um, scripting system. You also have um, the Ever Season, which is actually Ken Thane's um, film submission to that um, contest and a couple other ones, which will be in the show notes. Uh, another notable as well, actually, before I forget, is actually called Antichamber. That was actually quite an interesting um, piece of, um, of really, you don't know what's really going on. And also another one was Blade Runner, which I will explain a little bit more, um, which is basically someone uh, developed um, a trailer, a game trailer for um, Blade Runner, like a movie trailer, all in game, and he just did it for fun. Um, he actually did another film with just showing off the ability to show what Lord of the Rings cinematic would look like. It, they're both really slick, and it was just experimental, just to see if it could be done. So you never know what can come out of experimentation. Um, it looks pretty slick, even though it, you know, it's very, it may be very difficult, but at least you get a lot of reward out of it. Um, so switching back, um, in between those times, we have another tool that was um, James and uh, Hugh McDonald 
it, under their unframed productions, they created a tool called the Unreal Movie Studio. Uh, again, not as notable. I mean, it was used for a small stint contest uh, for the machinima.com site, which was the real short, uh, real short contest where people could develop, you know, a short, real short short. Um, and that contest ran for a couple of months or maybe a year, but definitely the, the website was trying to, again, cultivate um, content and, you know, not trying to do epic productions, but at least, again, has been noted in um, the podcast to, to, you know, go small, don't go do epics, but just do s small stuff so you can just get, cut your teeth and, and get you know, skills and to grow slowly instead of trying to go balls out, you know, really ambitious. Um, and then a year after that, the big news that really surprised a lot of people was that it's one of the very first iterations of Previs is that when Steven Spielberg was using um, Unreal Tournament, it, and this is Unreal Tournament 1, because of the date, this was back in 2001, um, he was using it for his previs for the set design of his movie, Artificial Intelligence. Um, it was collaborated with Industrial Light and Magic, and, and as you well know, for the Mandalorian, for the volume, and using Stagecraft and so forth. So they were cutting their teeth that way back then to get their chops to do virtual production. And Steven Spielberg was one of the very first uh, noted uh, directors of a very high caliber to use those tools to work on his film to make it more efficient and so forth. And then the initial announcement of Matinee was actually announced in July of 2021, uh, actually 20, 2001, sorry, jumping a little ahead. Um, so Epic really released details of the matinee tool way back in 2001. Um, again, we didn't really see it in mainstream ability until the 20, 2003 edition of Unreal Tournament. Um, they did have uh, Unreal 2 be released, but that was done, but matinee wasn't ready for that. So. They did still use in-game cinematics like Unreal did, taking it up another notch with actually story cutscenes, um, much like in Unreal Tournament in 2003. But again, Matinee wasn't ready yet for that imp implementation. So that's, again, the evolution of tools, even if they didn't have names for it. So the... The announcement of the Unreal Tournament um, or Unreal making something Unreal was actually the first iterations of it were rumored to be around in, in the beginning of 2003. Actually, Ken Thane was the one that he heard that the Epic was planning a contest that would include slots from Shima Productions made in Unreal Tournament 2003. And then the formal announcement for the competition actually was in July of that same year where it was entitled the $1 million Make It Unreal competition. And it was, like I said, a collaboration between Epic and NVIDIA, and also the Academy of the Machinima Arts and Sciences was also coordinating the, the non-interactive movie portion of the contest. And then the biggest thing that has really changed the world to its epic proportions, pun not intended, um, is that that year in October, Epic Games released the very first version of its Unreal Engine for use for education and non-commercial projects, where even to this day, people are using the, the engine to create mind-boggling things in games and movies and so forth, and it's done all for free. You can use it as a wonderful resource and the teaching resources provided these days is astronomical. So it's definitely from its humble beginnings, you know, over 19 years ago, it's just mind boggling what has come to pass because of their openness to allow people to use it without cost. And then the interesting tidbit for the, the grand 
finals of the Mach Make Machinima contest, which is the journey, uh, Frederick Kirchner's, um, the journey is that there was an interview done by Homeland. Um, it was a hardware led uh, website way back in February of 2005. They had a brief interview with the Unreal developers on the Make Something Unreal contest, and they asked the question on another subject why was Journey picked as the best movie award winner? One of the guys named Steve Pullidge said, quote, Journey was unique and well done. It had a thoughtful storyline and unique art. It certainly didn't look like it was running on the Unreal Engine. And that's one of the key things that Machinima has a skill in that if you can tap into it and have assets that create it so you don't even know the game from the movie. So sure, you can have your homages to Unreal, Halo, you know, Flight sims and stuff like that, but if you can use your resources to completely kind of in a way remix it so you don't even know what's coming from the game, you're using the game as the platform to create your content, but to not know where the pieces fit to make it what it was the game to your film, your film stands on its own and nobody really has to know how it's running. It just as long as it allows you to create your stories and, um, and allows you to get your vision and it doesn't matter to a lot of people what you're running it matters to them the visual presentation and that you're able to put all the pieces together and make a wonderful production that they can enjoy you can enjoy releasing to people and and share you know the you know the fun and the drama and everything else that you produce to let other people feel the same thing that you do that you want to express in your films so this is pretty brief. There's not as much notables, um, but definitely um, the quality of the films that the Unreal Engine has produced has been really good. I mean, like anything, it's it's it has its moments, but definitely there have been high points. Um, in closing, I just want to mention two other um, productions that have worth. Um, there was a, a team that did uh, from Down Under called Victory. Victory did a, a series of tutorials in explaining how um, Unreal Tournament 2004, you know, each of the game types, they would show off with the, the team that they did in a humorous way of just ex trying to explain to you all the different genres of t game types that 2000, uh, Unreal Tournament 2004 provided, you know. And it was a really slick presentation and definitely was worth watching. And then there is another cinematic piece. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember the name of it at the moment, but it will be in the show notes and the video will be attached once I upload it to the archive. Um, definitely shows a very cinematic, um, it's very foreboding and it depicts the the end of the world in a way and it deals with a lot of mechanics um so it definitely is a sick way of using again the matinee system and using the internal components of the unreal world and engine to create a quite an interesting presentation in their interpretation of what it means for the world to end um so so that's, that's it for Unreal. I mean, as always, sometimes these things are so detailed that there's no way for me to cover everything and it's not to be disrespectful, but it's just sometimes you don't want to turn this into a college essay or a college textbook that, you know, you're going to get bored after a while. So hopefully all these little tidbits brighten your day and help you learn a little bit more of the history of the, at least the Unreal branch of this story. And I will talk to you next month for our next series on whatever engine we have it planned for. And even I don't know sometimes. Alright guys, thank you.